Hi everybody, this is a math game for people who know how to do order of operations. So as a quick reminder, order of operations is what tells us what order to do our math in when we have a question with lots of different symbols. And the order is something often people will memorize by learning PEMDAS, which is parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, and addition and subtraction. And that's the order you do them in. If that sounds alien to you and you've never heard of it, this is not a lesson for you. But if you have, here's a cool way to practice it. For this, you are going to need some dice. If you have 10-sided dice, go for those because it will give you more choices of numbers to roll with. If you don't, just use the six-sided ones that you probably have in a bunch of random games around your house like Monopoly or Sorry or any of those. And if you don't have either, see if you have a card deck. If you grab a card deck, take out all the face cards, that's the jacks, queens, and kings, then what you have is cards with a bunch of numbers on them, and you can use them for this too. For today, since I have dice in large numbers, clearly, I'm gonna practice with dice. If you want to do this game with a friend, you can. If you want to do this game with yourself, you can. To start with, you're going to need to make a simple equation with all blank spaces. We're going to start with this little one first. So it's blank times blank plus blank. And remember, if we look at order of operations, the times is going to happen first, and then the plus will get added on. And then you're going to have to decide, is your goal biggest or smallest? I'm going to say our goal is biggest. We're going to see what the largest answer we can get using this equation and whatever I get on these three dice. All right, I have a six and a four and another four. This is the place where if you're playing with someone else, they would roll their own set of dice and do the same thing at the same time as you. If you're doing this on your own, just make some examples and see what would be largest. Let's see, if I put this four here and this four here, and this six here, then according to the order of operations, I would do the multiplication first. So four times four is 16, plus six more would equal 16 plus six is 22. So we could say four times four plus six, running out of space, equals 22. I think I can make it bigger though. What if I put one of the sixes, the plus six here. Let's try that. Well, four times six plus four. First we do the times. Four times six is 24, plus four more is 28. Check that out. I got larger. If my friend had picked this one and I'd picked this one, I would have won. If I'm working on my own, I would just ask myself, is that as big as I can get? In this case, I can tell it is because, I mean, there's two fours there, so there's not much I can change. If I switched the six and the four here, six times four is still the same as four times six because of the commutative property of multiplication, so we know we're good. You can make up your own little blank spaces like this. Here's one that's really interesting. This is one for if you're feeling pretty comfortable with this. I have one, two, three, four, five empty spaces because I put an exponent in here. So remember that's like a to the second power or to the third power, like squared and cubed, things like that. Now, I probably have five dice, but just in case, let's say if you only have one, let's try it this way. All right, we're gonna then roll five times to get ourselves our supplies. So we got a one, we got another one. We're gonna make a list of all the numbers we have to use. We got a five, we got a six, and we got a two. All right, so we would work using this to figure out, I'm gonna say this time, I want smallest. Let's figure out the smallest final answer that we can find using these five numbers in these empty spaces. Well, I know that exponents make things really big really fast. So I'm going to make sure that I don't put a big number in my exponents because remember, if you square a number, you times it by itself. And that's just from putting a two in the exponents. If I put a six in the exponents, then I'd be taking this number and timesing it by itself six times. 
So I'm going to use one of my ones and put it right here. And then I'm going to cross it out. I'm doing it in pen so it's easy to see, but probably you'd want to do this work in pencil or rewrite it with each guess so you could keep track. All right, according to our order of operations, parentheses are gonna happen first. So I'm gonna add these two things together, multiply that total times this, and then subtract this. Oh no, I wasn't thinking. I'm gonna subtract this. If I subtract a huge number, I could get a really little number. I could even get something into the negative numbers. I'm gonna switch and put my six here and get a huge exponent. I want this number to be big, so I'm gonna put my five here. Ha 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 ha. All right, and then let's see, I can either do two plus one is three times one, would equal three, or one plus one is two times two is four. Ah, this is bigger. I want small, so one plus two is three times one. Okay, I used all my numbers, let's figure this out. Ooh, this is gonna be hard. Okay, so order of operations, parentheses, one plus two is three. I'm gonna rewrite because that's how I like to keep track in this work. All right, next is exponents, five to the sixth power. For everyone's sake, I'm gonna press pause for a second while I figure that out. Okay, according to my calculations, five to the sixth power, five times five times five times five times five times five is 15,625. So we're at Minus 15,625. I think our number is going to be in the negatives. All right, now we're going to come here and do multiplication. Remember, when a number touches the side of a parenthesis, it automatically means multiplication. You can put the little x in there if it helps your brain. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 15,625 equals negative 15,625. Two. Now, I'm pretty sure this is the smallest answer I could get using these numbers and this equation, but it might not be. If you think you can get something smaller, go for it. You could also invent your own blank spaces equation, roll a set of numbers, and then send it to your friend and challenge them. You could say, hey friend, using this equation and these numbers, what is the largest thing you can create? If you want to do it on your own, that would be pretty cool too. But I think this would be a fun one to email friends back and forth with or to post on our Google Stream if you want. If you did a few of these, this would be a pretty solid, you know, math work for the day, especially if it had some exponents in it. Maybe work on it for a while and see how it goes for you. If you want to be, you know, really wild, see if you can challenge a parent to join you if they have time later in the day. Or if you have an older sibling who's already gone to middle school or high school, they know this stuff. That could be a fun work to do together also. If you have any that you're not sure about or you forget how to do the order of operation stuff, just take a little picture and send it to me and I'll help you out. Whatever you choose, have a good day, do some good work, and stretch your brain a little. Don't stop when it starts to get a little hard. Stop after you've pushed yourself for a bit because that's how brains grow. Have a good day. I miss you.